Hi everyone, I'm Frank. I'm the uh, founder of uh, SpeakerWise. Uh, SpeakerWise, as you can see on the slide, is an open reporting solution for uh, whistleblowers. Uh, it's open because it enables anyone uh, to start up a named or anonymous uh, dialogue to securely report on concerns or misconduct with any organization in the world. Our objective or main objective is to encourage uh, global transparency. So I don't know if you know, but uh, there's uh, around 40% of wrongdoing in the world that is now being discovered through uh, tips. But there's also around 80% of people that are afraid of giving them, and that's what we want to change. So the question we want to ask to the market is, are you looking to safely report or receive safe reports on misconduct? The answer we want to give to the market is stop using or receiving emails because they can either be uh, hacked, they disclose in those cases also the full identities, and they are by no way compliant with the latest um, whistleblower regulations. The business model, to go straight to the point, um, it's twofold. There's, um, it's mainly B2B. Um. So companies worldwide that are sensitive to um, reputation risks um, are the main target. Secondly, companies that need to organize their compliance with new uh, whistleblowing regulations. Just uh, mentioned this uh, before in Europe, before the end of the year, there's a new set of regulations that will become applicable, which will make our platform uh, attractive for, um, for European-based uh, companies, but there's similar regulations around the world and the UK is going to be next and, and the US I'm hearing uh, is going into the same direction. Uh, so there's new regulations that are being prepared uh, around the world, which will make our platform uh, um, add value. The second business model is um, business to individuals to business. So it's a bit of a different model. Uh, if you uh, kindly would have a look at uh, your left on, on the slide, you can see an example of an encrypted invitation that we would send to companies. So it explains what SpeakerPrize is about. Um, in this case, uh, uh, the reporter, which is myself, uh, is, uh, has chosen to be named. It can just as well be anonymous. Uh, it gives a brief uh, description, so I would like to set up a secure dialogue session on the secure speaker price platform to report on misconduct by your employees. Uh, it explains the relationship category, I'm a supplier of that company. It explains the risk category, I know something about corporate espionage. Uh, and then I indicate the urgency and potential impact uh, categories. These kind of emails, if any given company received, received those uh, in the whole world, they will need to react upon it. That's what we assume uh, from a corporate governance perspective. They cannot uh, leave it aside. They will need to respond. Uh, and that's why the, the second business model has been uh, has proposed. So individual users, in our opinion, will, which will receive access for free, will be able to generate leads and pull in payable uh, companies in, in this way. So by sending kind of invites, they will need to respond. And once they respond, after a few times, it will become payable. The tech, I don't want to go into too much details, um, but it's uh, first of all about secure dialogue setups and documentation uh, processes. A prototype is already available uh, on the internet. Um, it's about developing what we also want to make available is uh, Chrome extensions and Outlook uh, add-ons. So people have direct access from standard email systems to our platform. It's military grade encryption, so the highest level of encryption available uh, today. Um, it's um, where all data is kept within, um, with, with that level of encryption. We make available dashboards also there. Um, we have uh, prototypes available uh, with also if the company wants to pay for it, real-time uh, API access. Uh, we are, or we have plans to develop AI machine learning algorithms. And we also want to write away agreements to uh, the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, we will make available email finders for our users and a watch list um, screener screening capability. 
Um, and then our cost based model, I will come back to on the next slide. This slide I've actually already added on the basis of uh, your comments. Um, so, global scalability, it's a SaaS based uh, software as a service based solution for we don't need to go in any given country with a subscription based licensing model behind it. Uh, so, it's, it's really uh, ideal for global uh, scalability purposes. The distributors are, as explained in the first place, the individuals around the world who appreciate security. They will receive access for free, uh, will be able to report and invite any uh, organization to a secure dialogue session. But once uh, they start the companies, it will become payable after a few times. And it, it definitely also requires global online marketing uh, to spread uh, the word in order to, for it to become really uh, scalable. The investment opportunity we are looking for, and as you might uh, assume by now, we are in a business idea uh, stage. Um, so we are looking for an early seed investment of around 200,000 US in exchange for 10% of uh, equity. The plant usage, as I just explained, spreading the word is going to be important. So we need um, uh, a part or a big part of, of it on, on marketing, online marketing. Um, and then you see the percentage of also that we would like to have mm. sales and uh, some further research and especially development. The exit strategy or the main exit strategy is for us to become acquired by one of the market leaders for uh, whistleblowing platforms. We have Navex in the US. We also have EQS in, in Europe, which is the market leader. We are actually working together with, with EQS um, uh, as a partner because they consider our, uh, our platform or our approach as being complementary um, to theirs. But we are, of course, open to your input on funding and preferred uh, exit strategies. We made up some detailed forecasts. Uh, I don't think we have the time to go into the details of it, uh, but basically um, we derived um, a going to market plan uh, from it, by two, uh, 2023, we want um, to generate a turnover of uh, 15.2 million uh, euros. Um, this, I, uh, um, but that's my opinion, is is a conservative uh, figure, uh, given the total ad addressable market of more than 25 million companies um, for the moment that could use these kind of um, uh, solutions. Uh, we are two for the moment. Um, I have a co-founder in, um, in in the UK. Uh, he can't help it because he's born there. Um, so a full stack uh, software developer. I'm the uh, CEO. I'm Belgian. Uh, I'm a subject matter expert with um, big four audit firm, uh, partner experience. Um, I also developed uh, solutions and, and successfully sold them before. Uh, so I would like to end here because I'm already past my five minutes. So I'm looking forward to, to your comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Yes, uh, uh, in fact, uh, as you can also notice a lot of French speaking companies uh, from France, Switzerland, Belgium and Luxembourg, the next one. Um, Anybody wants to fire the, the first question? I think it's a fascinating topic. It's very early stage, obviously, but uh, it is, uh, as, as we know, a big need. We saw that also due to the context and the, and, and the politics in the in the in the US, uh, but also just uh, having a platform that uh, really help companies be more compliant. And there is there are more regulations. That, uh, happening, or that's going to be uh, uh, input on companies, and I, I think you're the right. Uh, you're on the right track on, on the right topic. After that, the business the scalability is definitely uh, uh, probably the questions going to pop up on that. So, so I would leave the floor to anyone who have a question about the business, how it grows, uh, uh, how you're going to reach uh, your customers, uh, the money raising also. Uh, so anybody want to start? I think this is a great idea, uh, but what I really don't understand um, is reporting uh, for whistleblowers is a two-way street. Sometimes the reporting is valid and truthful, 
And sometimes it's vindictive and uh, untruthful. And what do you have in your algorithm that can uh, search for repeated offended people? Um, in a major company like AT&T in the United States or uh, Amazon, let's use them, a lot of people are whistleblowing all the time. And not everything is valid and some things are very valid. So how do you deal with those issues? Hmm. Um, very useful question. Um, um, first of all, as I mentioned, we, we want to keep out uh, the really serious offenders uh, through the watch list uh, screening that I mentioned. So the, any, anybody that has any criminal record would be excluded from, um, from the whole system. Now, the ones that are uh, abusing the whole system, which are not criminals, um, there will be a, a functionality to, to exclude them from, from reporting. So the, the companies that receive the reports uh, after multiple uh, receiving multiple reports, they will be able to blacklist um, uh, certain senders um, out of, uh, so they don't receive them, um, in any reports anymore. And then, uh, as you already mentioned, uh, you already referred to, to algorithms. The intention is also to develop some artificial uh, algorithms, uh, intelligence algorithms to help the whole system detect some, some abusive use of, um, of the reports and to exclude them already uh, from um, before it's, it's, it's being sent. So that's, that's, that's the next step for us, but that's not be, that hasn't been developed yet. Well, if, if, if I may say one more thing, um, the United States has been dealing with this falsity of information for the last four plus years. And people now are very loath to really believe much of anything. And so valid criticisms are ignored and yet very uh, contrived, duplicitous whistleblowing uh, situations are magnified out of proportion because of the original whistleblower report. So I think you got a big problem on your hands of recreating um, the seriousness of truth and and justifying to people that what you're publishing is a truthful, honest report, even though it's highly subjective. That's just my feeling about it. No, no, no. I, I think you're you're absolutely right, and I do realize that that risk. Um, but what we do is not send a report. We make available a secure dialogue. Uh, platform. So it's it's for the receiving end, for the recipient, to go into dialogue with with the sender, the, the whistleblower, uh, to to judge and and elaborate if what he's saying, if he's giving enough details and enough, if if the probability is high enough for for him to be to yeah to be believed and to be to be accepted. Uh, so, so the truthfulness is is um, is uh, acceptable, yes or no. So it, it's, um, but, but, but I do accept that, it, of course, there's some sensitivity around it. I would also like to put it the other way around because uh, there's now a lack of transparency. There are now a lot of people that, are, um, that do not dare, especially outside the US, that do, do not uh, want to go uh, and, and, and report on misconduct because they are afraid of uh, not being protected enough. They are afraid because they don't want uh, to send uh, uh, emails, uh, they they are uh, so so. There's a uh, from uh, the, the, the for instance all the uh, accounting fraud uh, scandals that are still popping up every year. Uh, the the employees usually know about it, but they are they are afraid of reporting to the to the auditors because they don't know how. So there's there's a lot of of uh, um, there's a lot to say about the other side also. So there's a lack of global transparency as a whole, but of course I do accept that it, we need to, to be very careful that the whole credibility of, of the whole platform is not uh, taken away by, by people that continue to abuse it, to, to um, send uh, all kinds of um, yeah, abusive reports. Um, I May I ask one more question? And I'm sorry to tie up this conversation, but this is an issue of great interest to me. There is a power disparity between the company or person that is being reported upon and the whistleblower. And does your algorithm take into account the fact that 
there is a power disparity. When when women uh, say uh, the Me Too movement was all about a power disparity. Mm -hmm. um, think about in France, the, the minister for the treasury who was accused of a terrible crime in the United States and who counteracted uh, that uh, discussion by mobilizing an army of lawyers and, and, and people who totally discounted the whistleblower. And so this is a, it's a, you know, it's a very good tool you've developed, but there need to be major safeguards. And I'm just, I didn't get from your report what those are. That may be your secret sauce. Those may be trade secrets. It may be that you can't talk about that, but just ease my mind a little bit. Yeah. I think, I think on the safeguards, these are things, um, 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 because it's all about algorithms. The algorithms still need to be developed. And, and, and as, as you rightfully put it, there, there will need to be some, some safeguards. But in general, um, the, um, if, if somebody steps forward, um, they can either do it named or anonymous. Uh, so the, 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 on, on the level of the whistleblower, there, there are enough safeguards. It's, it's for them to, to, um, to decide when they disclose their name. Uh, we will safeguard their identity, not disclose any identities with, again, military grade uh, security. Uh, on the other side, of course, there also needs to be safeguards uh, because it's not because you have a, uh, an anonymous uh, or even a named uh, whistleblower. Uh, the, the, the... I, I, I understand the issue, Frank. I've been on both sides of it. I was targeted by the animal rights activists when I worked at Berkeley, uh, just simply for trying to protect our researchers. And, uh, and I've had the inclination to whistleblow on a lot of people that I work with that I didn't do for professional reasons. But um, it's just a it's a it's a scenario that's fraught with danger on both sides. And I guess I'd feel better about it if there were uh, if I understood it. And I don't want to talk anymore. I've taken up everybody's time, but I need a little more information. That's just that's just me. Yeah. And, and also one, one last thing, Judith, the uh, platform comes with a lot of explanations, a lot of frequently asked questions, a lot of answers, a lot of uh, ready-made policies, a lot of uh, procedures. So we are explaining what the safeguards and what, what the risks are okay. to, to anybody working with, with and, and using the platform. So there's a, yeah. But I agree in countries where black money is um, a real issue. And eventually, with cryptocurrencies of different kinds, this is this is going to be important. Anyway. I, th I think it's an interesting topic. That's why I wanted them to come back and uh, and present to all of you. Uh, early stage, I still I think it depends on regulations. I think if you put the platform in place early enough, you would be able to capture some of that market. Uh, any question about business? Any question about the deal? And uh, then we need to move to the next presentation. Thank one, you. one question. Anyone? Uh, yeah, this is Randy Reed here. Um, uh, your go-to market strategy, uh, it seemed uh, uh, rather vague. I was wondering if you could tell us who specifically uh, is your client and how you're going to reach them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but there's two, two sets of, of models and two sets of clients. Um, the individuals are going to be reached through, through online marketing and spreading the word, uh, online campaigns, online a lot of online publications, online awareness that we want to uh, create. The individuals will get access for free and they will pull in uh, payable companies. So when they start reporting, companies will not have any other choice than to go into the dialogues, which they will need to pay for uh, from a certain point onwards. The second model is about uh, business for business, uh, um, companies needing to be compliant. As I mentioned before, in, in, in Europe, there are new needs before the end of the year. Uh, all European companies, uh, so it's not a small size, it, it's all uh, European companies need to uh, arrange for their compliance um, before the end of the year. Uh, for, for very small ones, there are some exceptions, but um, largely above even 50 50, uh, not 50,000 or 50 million, but 50 employees, um, European-based uh, organizations will need to organize their compliance. 
So there's there's and and there the going to market approach, of course, will uh, require uh, some some direct sales and and and. Uh, uh, but again, referring to the first model, we should be able to get some some traction um, with uh, with individuals that um, appreciate um, security and want to onboard on the system for free and start using it. Uh, we will generate some some credentials and then go to the next. Okay. Okay, I need to, I need to cut you. Uh, so thank you again. Um, it's, again, it's an interesting topic, but I think we can cover it for a long time. Uh, everybody has uh, your contact information. I uh, expect everyone to put a little score on their on their sheet. And mm -hmm. let's go to the next presentation with Julien. Julien Dussault from Telecom Luxembourg. You can upload your slides and uh, thank you for participating.